The Federation of Cambridge Residence Associations, FECRA, organised a well-attended seminar on the 21st of November to discuss the Greater Cambridge Partnerships scheme for the Greenways project. The Greenways are a fantastic opportunity to achieve the kind of modal shift in transport that we'd all like to see for Cambridge. And they also offer massive other benefits in terms of green infrastructure and ecosystems and placemaking. So this was an opportunity for people to talk and discuss, not in detail, but general ideas about principles of greenways and how they might work. Great, um, good evening everybody. Um, my name is Steve Jones. Um, I'm a parish councillor in Bourne. I've been asked to facilitate the evening today. The pleasure now to hand over to Wendy Blythe, who's going to do the welcome. Well, welcome everybody. And first of all, I want to say how great it is to see you all here this evening. I'd like to thank the various officers from the City and County Council for coming along after work. We also have councillors and reps from parish councils, residents associations, and reps from a wide range of community groups, including walking, cycling, equestrian, conservation, heritage and open space and environmental groups. The Greenways are a great opportunity to develop cycling infrastructure which will support the modal shift in transport we all want to see. But they also offer huge additional benefits in terms of green infrastructure, placemaking and ecosystem services. So it's important for everyone that we get it right. It seemed to us timely to get together some of the people who are most involved before any decisions are made. We know that people have different views and priorities, but this is a chance to explore the issues together, not to come up with any solutions yet or to discuss in detail, but just to hear from all of you what you see as the key points that need to be considered. We will all need to work together, city and villages, to make sure the outcome is the best it can be, and we see this seminar as a step in doing that. We're very fortunate in having Tom Turner with us this evening. Tom's a landscape architect, garden designer, ex-town planner, university lecturer, and passionate cyclist. Tom is particularly proud, although he tells me he rather, I said it more modestly, of the green strategy for London he developed for the London Planning Advisory Committee, which Lewis might have had some association with, which included a proposal for a London-wide cycle network. Tom's going to share with us his ideas on the key principles that may help to make the Greenways a success, and you will then have a chance to ask him and the other members of our panel questions and share your own ideas. First of all, though, we're going to hear from Simon Manville, who's the officer in charge of the Greenways project. There have already been consultations on two of the routes, and two more are in the middle of the process. Simon's going to give us a brief outline of the scope of the project and update us on the progress to date and likely time skills. Over to you, Simon. Right, yes. Okay. Can you all hear me? Oh, good enough. Um, okay, good evening. Um, thank you uh, for inviting me along tonight. Um, I'm Simon Manville, as Wendy said. I'm the project manager for the Cambridge Greenways project. Um, I'm going to briefly introduce the project and tell you where we're up to. We've been told I've got five minutes, so I'm going to speak quite quickly. Um, like it or not, Cambridge is, growing, is a growing city and uh, Greater Cambridge Partnership has stated aims around growing and sharing prosperity. And some of the ways it will do this are by creating, and I, I'm quoting from the Greater Cambridge Partnership web, website, Better, greener transport, connecting people to homes, jobs, study, and opportunity. Strong, healthy communities, uh, improving quality of life for existing and new communities, and air quality, addressing the damaging effects of air pollution. The Greenways can tackle all of these issues uh, in one way or another. The intention is to create, create 12 new or improved uh, walking, cycling, and equestrian uh, use paths um, where it's appropriate. And the business case for the creation of the routes is that we'll encourage drivers um, to switch from their bicycles uh, for safe, convenient, and enjoyable journeys in and out of the city. Um, 
We also recognize an opportunity to fashion routes that are attractive, convenient, and enjoyable for walkers, and joggers, horse riders, leisure cyclists, um, and not to mention those living along the routes. Uh, it can be an improvement for those too. So, uh, what is a greenway? Uh, well, some of the words that I've heard in the pre-consultation engagement events that we've held so far, uh, safe, attractive, convenient, direct and inclusive. That's what we're hearing people want them to be. Um, Sustrans have this definition. Um, so an attractive and direct corridor away from traffic, uh, an all-weather hard surface, at least two meters wide, more wear appropriate, <coughs> off-road where possible, or on-road low vehicle movements and low speed limits, and safe crossings across main roads, railways and rivers with a preference for continuity. Um, in addition to the hard surface, we have an opportunity to introduce some appropriate environmental landscaping improvements where they fit. Um, and hopefully we can get some insights on what we could do with that uh, this evening. And um, whilst I mentioned 12 greenway routes, the intention is that they will also connect with some of our other routes around the city. So the busways, the Chisholm Trail that's uh, coming through and um, other cross city cycling schemes to create a more cohesive network that's easy to navigate. Some of those are indicated on the map that, that I've brought along this evening. So where did the Cambridge Greenways come from? Well, um, uh, hopefully a lot of you will have seen this report. Um, this was a report which was commissioned by, uh, we commissioned Nigel Brigham to write um, back in May 2016. And in October last year, uh, he produced very comprehensive reports, um, evaluating routes and making recommendations. And this enabled us to apply for funding to develop the 12 routes. Rather than simply pushing forwards um, with the con consultant's recommendations, though, um, we think it's a very good idea to ask pe people what they want first. So this way we can see which suggestions are well supported and which are not um, before we make more defined proposals and hold consultations. So with this in mind, in July this year, we held four information gathering community engagement events, two in Waterbeach, two in Fullbourne, uh, and then these were followed by four more events in October. So one in Barton, one in Hazing Field, and two in the city. Um, we've identified a number of themes from those, but I probably haven't got time right now, but hopefully we'll get to that later. Um, so I suppose work streams in the project are to, to plan, or within the scope of the project, to, to plan for design and construction of new routes, um, including landscaping to negotiate with landowners and key stakeholders, such as Network Rail, for example, um, to plan for future maintenance of new routes, to plan new coherent and consistent signage and wayfinding across the network. Um, and I've also highlighted uh, on this slide some areas where we're looking to gain some input. Um, and one final thing I'd like to mention is that we have enlisted the help of uh, the design school at CRC to come up with a logo for the Greenways. Um, and that this should be used on kind of signage, maps, future literature. Um, we've got 50 teenagers at the college uh, who've been set the task of designing the logo and a background theme. Um, and the winner will be decided by a panel of judges and announced in the local press early in the new year. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, my details are up there, and uh, I'll have a chance to ask some questions later on. Thank, thank you very much, Simon. That was um, masterfully five minutes, so it's great. So, <coughs> over to you, Tom. Thank, thank you so much for inviting me, and thank you to Simon. I was very, very, I was very, very happy with what you said, and I, I'm, some of my lecture is recommending what you've already declared an intention to do, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. I'd like to start with a few illustrations of London to explain my somewhat biblical assessment of cycle routes. So, next. For, for first, this, by, this is a proposal for a cycle bridge, 25 million pounds from Rotherhithe to Canary Wharf and it shows to me what's been most wrong about cycle planning. If, if, if you look here, 
what they thought to themselves is that because a cycleway is green transport, it's perfectly all right to, con to convert the only riverside open space in this part of London into a transport interchange. It's a horrible idea. Next. My general view of cycle planning is that it's more like planning for a horse and cart or a horse and carriage, as you see in the, in the bottom left, than it is for planning for a motor-powered vehicle. So if you compare the, the old road, which is how I would like cycle tracks to be, with the new road through Glen Shiel, you'll see that engineering is, is not the right approach. There, the bottom um, right, you see also that the old road and the new one, such a much better experience for the cyclist to be on the left. It's a question of horizontal and vertical curves. If you get them out of a computer program, they're awful. Next, please. So, a uh, video. Um, uh, it's been, uh, the, the London has both heaven and hell in cycling, and th this is one of London's better cycle routes because the space on the pavement to ride your bicycle. The, the quite civilized cyclists not interrupting the pedestrians. You see a cyclist disappearing behind the bus there. It's impossible. So we've had a lot of protests and what we're arguing for is two separate networks for commuters and for leisure use. If they can overlap so much the better. If they can't, then you need to provide both. This is how not to do it. The previous one was Thamesmead and this is to show how you can um, combine pedestrian and cycle use of a pedestrian space. This is Richmond. And the cyclists are very civilized and it works well. The, 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 the legal and ethical point for doing this is that pedestrians always have priority. Um, next. So the, Coming up to Cambridge after Wendy kindly invited me, I looked at this plan on the train and I've drawn a lot of diagrams myself and so I, I know what to look for. And what it shows me is firstly, too much consistency of approach. It's standardized. Oh no, I should start by saying what's good about it, sorry. <laughs> the the two, two things that are very good about it are that it's a comprehensive network and that's a fabulous thing to plan. And, and the other thing that's good is you call it a greenway, although I don't quite agree with Sustrand's definition of a greenway, but it's a, a very good thing to do. The, the problems are that it's standardized. It doesn't seem to be contextualized, which is why I overlaid it on uh, a map. And it doesn't seem to be no, in, no, no indication of connections between the routes. Next one, please. This is the first cycle where I got, expecting, having come from hell, to find that Cambridge was going to be heaven. This is the first cycle route I saw in Cambridge, and I think it's terrible. I think it's extremely ugly. It looks like the, you know, the back end of Croydon, but, but Croydon's better than this. And this is Cambridge, for heaven's sake. I don't know who to blame, but you should find them and blame them. Next one, please. And, and in the centre of Cambridge, I wasn't terribly impressed. I was expecting heaven, and uh, next slide, I, I, I didn't find it. I mean, this is better than London, but it's it's so so. It's not the next one. It's so so. Then I went to to look at to cycle out, and the first one I looked at. Could you start the video, please? Was this? So if you look at the old medieval map. The, what, what, what it showed, I was too slow off the mark to show it to you. What, what, what it shows is that you have in, in the, um, Sheep's Green and Lammas Land uh, a thing which is impor as, as important in urban history as anything you've got in the Fitzwilliam Museum. It's, a, it's an extraordinary example of a medieval space that survives. And I think you should do everything possible, as you would with an antique furniture, or clock or something to look after it. The next one, please. Um, th then I cycled further out, and the video, it's a video. Um, th this is another fantastic space. The landscape quality is of the very highest. The cycleway, I regret. I think that the, the hydrocarbon paving, which is how I describe it, other people call it blacktop or bitmap, I, a, a bit, Mac. I, I think it's uh, a, a pity to have done that. Just, again, such an important place. You know, the Lammas land was where people came to eat, uh, could, could, could graze uh, uh, 
their cattle during the winter and the spring when everybody was hungry. So the next one I looked at was Garrett Hostel Lane. I rather prefer its old name of Fine Silver Lane. Could you start the video, please? And I, so you see again the, the sheep and the cattle, as you've still got them. That's why it's so important. But the way it's been treated by the highway engineers is an absolute atrocity. I mean, this is, an, this is the equivalent of a, of a Rembrandt or a, an oak chest, a Grinling Givens carbon, um, carving. And what, what I think has happened here is that the blacktop has been spread on top of the ancient cobbles. And what you should do is, is pick it off again. You know, send in archaeologists to scratch it all off. I mean, there are hardly any motor vehicles on this land and a terrific number of pedestrians and cyclists. And roads are very important. I can do no better than quote Hilaire Belloc to you. that The road is one of the great fundamental institutions of mankind. The road moves and controls all history. He loved old roads, as I do. And they should be looked after like ancient buildings, which we used to modernize. They, they shouldn't be destroyed. I mean, look at the repairs. I've, examples I've got in a Bible repaired with sellotape and fablon stuck onto an oak chest. So, so go further out now. The, the section of Burroughs Walk, I think it's okay. It's sort of intermediate between town and country. It's strangely Art Deco, the, the, the detailing of the fence. I suppose it's from the 1920s. It's, uh, next slide, please. It seems fine. This, however, is another atrocity. I think there are 30 lights here. And all the signage and the hazard paving... Dreadful! <laughs> um, could you do the video, please? The, Ad Adams Road, these people, I don't know who they are, but they shouldn't be parking there. It's far too important a cycle infrastructure to, to use. It, sh it could be treated as one of the London superhighways, which really are super. Thank you, Boris. And let's go on to the next. Now, th th this, again, is awful. I, I think of it as having been done by Birmingham Public Works Department in the, in the early 1950s. Look at the precast concrete curb and the black top and the fence, which reminds me of a portcullis. And then as the, the pièce de résistance, look at the signage. All, all these absent-minded professors you've got here, they need to be reminded every 15 meters that there's a, a separation between the pedestrian route and the, and the cycle route. Next slide, please. Uh, why not, in, instead of that portcullis fencing, what about some cleft oak fencing? You can see it as a little bit folksy, but it's a beautiful product, and it's more sustainable because you don't have to sawmill it. Next one, please. This is a most unexpected to me example of pure abstract modernism. It's the kind of thing that British architects should have been doing in the 1930s or the 1950s. But as for putting it here, um, next slide, please, and that's a video. <laughs> Just, it makes me gasp. Um, it's, well, what it is, is pushing the town into the country, whereas a greenway should drag the country into the town. It's a much nicer prospect. I, I, I rather like the conjunction here, though, between the fencing of, of the, the modern development, which is okay, and then it's a much better, it's not as nice as cleft oak for the fence, but it's respectable. And the treatment of the vegetation here is excellent, whereas if we go on to the next illustration, th this is, th it's, it's unbelievable. This is Cornus alba sibirica. It grows extremely well in Siberia, hence the name. But as for planting, you know, 3,000 of them in Cambridge, I can see no reason. Whereas the treatment on the other side is far better. I understand an ecologist was employed, and he really did a very good job on it. Next slide, please. So now I want to, to just, what I'm arguing is that a greenway should not be treated as a single purpose engineering project, which is not what Simon tends to do, so thank goodness. But it, 
it should be treated as an aspect of urban design and urban landscape design, and it should be related to the theories of those subjects, which reach back 2,000 years and apply to greenways as to everything. So I just um, get some slogans from this book. Vitruvius, which is the source of Simon's point, uh, argued that everything you design should have been translated into English as commodity, firmness, and delight, but you can think of it as structural quality, visual quality, and ecological quality when it relates to, to landscape architecture. Um, oh, no, 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 now I'm going through all of them. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alexander Pope launched the fundamental principle of landscape architecture, which is that design must respond to the genius of the place. No standard designs, everything individualized. Humphrey Repton, great famous landscape architect, argued that a design should not only be done for the spot, it should be done on the spot. Simon, when you're designing a greenway, get out there. Um, William Morris argued for using only the best materials, and that's right. I, I regard gravel as a very high quality material and cheap bitmap as a very low quality material. Patrick Geddes argued for a community involvement in planning, but this is not consultation, it's participation. And I think, I think you should be the design team for the project. It's not a question of a designer doing something and presenting it to you. You are the design team in Geddes' eyes and in mine. It comes from Edinburgh like me. Um, the next two, Popper and Alexander, they, they both argued against blueprint planning. They, they were both refugees from the Nazis and frightened of master plans and the master race. And they, they argued for piecemeal planning. And I do think that's a better thing to do. I think it's to, better to experiment as you go along with the greenways rather than try and roll them out like the American interstate system in the 1970s. A a Alexander, who, who studied in Cambridge, mathematics actually, um, he, he argued that you've got to relate all the components of the urban environment together. Uh, again, that you can't do a greenway as a thing on its own. It's got to relate to all the objectives, but also the other features. Now, Jane Jacobs, endless favorite, she, she argued for the attrition of motor cars by cities. Be fearless about taking land away from, uh, from the motor vehicle where, wherever possible, to, to give it to pedestrians and cyclists and horse riders. Um, and, and lastly, Nan Fairbrother, not so well known now as she was, she, she said that the, what, what every Englishman wants is a back door opening onto the countryside and a front door opening onto the high street. And I, I, I think you should try and treat Cambridge like that, to provide the whole population with that experience and not, as the West Cambridge example shows, of ramroading out into the, um, into the, the town, out into the countryside and look, looking like Croydon as it's being rebuilt. Now, now, a couple of suggestions of my own. Can you play the video, please? This is um, said to be, by the Scots, the oldest, is it, well, yeah, the oldest living thing in Europe, which is a yew tree beside a churchyard in Fortingall, which was a, a Celtic site. And so the yew tree was probably planted on a Celtic sacred site, which was taken over by the Christians. You see, it, it's got a diameter. That, that, that's standing stone evidence of the Celtic side. And uh, so I don't need to go back. And the last picture, the, di the diameter of the tree is about the size of this room, but it's died out in the middle. So my proposal for Cambridge, which is inspired by the German artist Joseph Beuys, who uh, proposed 7,000 oak trees, and he deposited... 7,000 slabs of granite and said, well, take one each time you plant an oak tree and then we'll monitor it. So my proposal for Cambridge is for each of the colleges, you've got 31, to, to sponsor a tree which will live longer than the Fortin Gaul oak. So they need to look for a place which is likely to be constant through land use changes. And, and, and they should create a habitat as well because for a long-lived long -lived tree, you need a habitat. So I think it's a nice challenge to give to the colleges. The, the next one, next picture, please. Oh, the, the, there's a, an, an old apple tree I noticed on Trumpington Road. I mean, if, if one college wanted to do an apple tree to see how long you can get that to live, I'd be very happy. And next one, please. Psycho, just a comment on psychopath surfacing. Sustrans did this ingenious calculation to show that uh, a bitmap path 
is cheaper than a gravel path because you've got to maintain a gravel path. I'm, I'm sure they're right about that, but of course cheaper doesn't mean better. Next slide, please. What I'd like to suggest to you is to, when you're doing some piecemeal planning, to investigate what the French do, which is to use les sables, les sables stabilisés. It's standard for all the parks in Paris, the standard surfacing. And the company, Semex here, and, and many other companies, they've adapted it for cycleways and pedestrian paths. What, what they do is to use limestone chipping, and limestone's local to Cambridge, and they, put, they use lime instead of bitumen as the binder. And then it sets, it, it's slow setting, and it sets almost like stone. And you see that the stiletto on it, not puncturing it. The next slide, please. And here's some examples of um, cycleways on stabilized limestone. A great advantage of it is that if you can cycle after, after dark because it's much lighter. The, the French draw attention to this, that you, you, you feel better and you can see the other bicycles, you know, sort of somewhat silhouetted against the moonlight shining on the, on the limestone. Uh, and, and so this is, this is what I hope you'll do. I, I hope that Cambridge will enter the pearly gates because really you have a fantastic opportunity to do better than Denmark better than Holland, to lead the world in cycle routes. You've, you've, got the, you've got the land, you've got the brains, and you've got the money too. And so by jingo, if we do, if anywhere can make a really good cycle route network, it's Cambridge. Go for it. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Tom. Not just passionate about cycling, obviously. Um, we've got about five or six minutes for questions. Everybody has to speak through the mic, so I'll give the mic to, to whoever would like to start. Questions or comments? Okay, fine. I'm Martin Smart, I'm a city councillor, I'm the lead councillor for cycling. So I probably should already know this, Simon, but what exactly can go, can't go on a greenaway? Because you talked about all the things that can, like horses, bicycles, people. So what about electric bikes, disability scooters, mopeds, uh, <coughs> motor bikes, cars, thinking about the guided busway, and you know, any number of other things like go-karts? Thank you. That's fine. Um, and yeah, we'll take a few questions and come back to each of you. Yeah, please. Just wondered if there, you have any opinions about um, cycling at night and lighting uh, out in the country. Great. Cycle lighting out in the country. Uh, Susan Stobbs, Friends of Midsummer Common. Um, I'm delighted to hear this wonderful, wonderful support for our open spaces in the centre of town. What worries me about, I, I'm, and I'm a great supporter of Greenways, but what I want to ask uh, um, about the project is they all end at the begin at the town and I want to know how you're channeling them into the town for future. Thank you very much. Any more just questions now? There'll be a time to come back later on if you sorry, time to come back later on if you want to. Great. So would you like to Simon just answer those two as quick as you can? Yeah, sure. Um, so what can't go on a greenway? Uh, I suppose the well what we are aiming for is that they will be NMU routes, so non-motorized user routes. Um, I cannot tell you what uh, level of motor vehicle would be allowed. I think electric bikes um, have a great future. Um, looking to Europe, there's, uh, uh, I think, 70% of all bikes in Germany are electric bikes. Um, that are being sold at the moment. So I think we need to keep an open mind to that. Um, and also mobility scooters, I think, sensible. What isn't sensible is motor vehicles in terms of cars, um, motorbikes and that kind of thing. So uh, your, ide your ideas and thoughts on how we cope with that? Um, uh, I don't think delivery vehicles uh, have a position <laughs> on, on a greenway. Thank you. And if anybody would like to know about a lightweight electric bike, see me afterwards. <laughs> there is one. <laughs> Cheap, not that, not expensive. Oh, sorry, no, no. Uh, I, 
I, I, I just to put this up to show. I've got a few extra illustrations if you want to see them. To show you, you, you can't classify routes for all the different kinds of traffic that's on it. it. It just becomes impossible. I've got 12 there, and I could easily give you another 12. And, and it, there's no principle. It depends on the individual circumstances of the route. It, ne it needs to be considered, managed, monitored. I, I did make the one remark about lighting, which is that if you use a light-coloured surface rather than a dark-coloured, apart from that, I, th I think it should be solar and I think it should be low down from an aesthetic point of view. I, I, I noticed the studs going across Lammas Land this evening, and they're fine, but there's not enough light, and so it, it needs a bigger installation than that in order to provide... Uh, we're just going to move on now to, um, to each of the panel speakers. We'll come back. You have a chance at the end, yeah? Um, each of the panel speakers to come up and do their two-minute pitch for their views, um, and we'll start with Lewis, please. Um, we have asked each of them to talk just for two minutes so that we then will open up to the floor afterwards for everybody to say whatever they want to say for half an hour. So, um, so um, we have committed as a, a Greater Cambridge Partnership and the county over £20 million largely on cycling in the centre of the city, and uh, quite a number of the thick and thin black lines on that um, map represent that. So um, I uh, support, and it was uh, steered largely by Francis, Greenways as an add-on uh, to that, but we clearly need to look at that urban uh, rural edge. I think we should have electric bicycles on them, and I think we also have to think about the different speeds that people will travel on those routes, because some people will be traveling 10, 15 miles at some pace, um, because that's the nature of some of the routes and some of the journeys. I'm particularly interested, and I, I, I reached these conclusions before I heard Tom about Sheep's Green, uh, Cofen, and Lammas Land because they are highly sensitive um, uh, areas, but that doesn't mean that with the right treatment there can't be a good capacity cycle route through there. So, yes, there are some really special environments. Um, I don't think the route through West Cambridge is the actual Coton cycle path. I think there is a cycle path, but I, I, I think if you looked at it, it wouldn't be wouldn't have passed your scoring probably either. Um, but it's certainly better than uh, the representation of the West Cambridge route because that's got a different purpose. Um, so I think, I, I think greenways are a really good concept, good idea, and I want to see us invest in them. But a lot of these routes are still conceptual and clearly actually looking at how that integrates with the landscape, how people can enjoy the landscape given that we have got fine landscape is critical, and I did like your different uh, surfacing method. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, so Matt, next, please. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you for inviting me uh, and for putting up my slide. Uh, I'll start with a question. What makes Cambridge unique? Where else do great numbers of people cycle to work through meadows with cows and horses? Countryside is seen through car windows is just a blur. The next generation of poets and artists won't be inspired that way, nor would anyone else. Our car-based transport system isn't working, or isn't working well. It steals our wealth and damages our health, intensifies inequality, and traps people at home, especially children, for fear of road danger. By walking, cycling, and riding horses, we can connect with the countryside, the sights and sounds, smells and seasons. Some of us are lucky enough to have access to that on a daily basis. Let's make it a possibility that everyone can enjoy. Inclusive greenways are an incredible opportunity to hand down a gift that will improve lives for generations to come. And the key priorities for them, a, green, a greenway should be should be inclusive, that means both e-cycles and uh, adapted cycles and mobility scooters as well, uh, attractive so that people will use it, useful, and of course, safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> Great, e exemplary timekeeping by all the speakers. Francis, would you like to come next? 
Thank you. Um, I've got three priorities, which means I've got uh, 40 seconds for each priority. Uh, my first priority, which is that the whole project should be a bottom-up project, and I give uh, huge credit to um, uh, Simon, Susan, and Charlie for the way they're going about it. It will only get public acceptance. People will only want it if it's essentially done bottom-up as a community project, and I'm absolutely passionate about that, and I think that's been happening. I absolutely welcome evenings like this so everybody can put their own views in. The second priority I have, and of course you have to remember that I'm a district councillor, so I come from outside the city, although I live quite close in Grantchester, but I come from the, area of a dis from, the, from the viewpoint of a district council person, is that they should be very, very rural feel right out into our villages. And that is the, the theme that you get coming through. Um, that means things like, uh, I mean, I addressed the National Farmers Union. The farmers are very keen on where, exactly where they go. We mustn't interfere with the farming. The surfacing is going to be extraordinarily important to people right out in the villages that these look rural. Uh, I can see Barton Parish Council, they know exactly what I mean by, by surfacing. The lighting, I suspect most of us in the rural area will want no lighting whatsoever. And actually we'll just say you put a light on the front of your bicycle. My children bicycle across Grantchester Meadows, I've come to terms with the fact that there are no lights on the a cycle route across Grants to Meadows. I personally think that's the right thing for the rural field. They put lights on their bicycles. That will possibly be a controversial thing. I don't know, because I know, for example, a lot of elderly ladies say that at night they don't feel very safe. That's going to be one of the things, as a community, we're going to have to come to terms with and discuss. Signage as well has always already been mentioned. So I think the look and the feel, particularly at the rural end, is going to be desperately, desperately important. If we don't get that right, we won't get the public acceptance. But I do say that I think the cycle route across Grants to Meadows, you were incredibly rude about it, but it works very well and it keeps its rural feel despite that surface. I think the two, the sort of twin concrete track through Coat and Countryside Reserves, to me, it mimics a, a, a tractor route. I think that works quite well because it's mimicking a tractor route. And my third priority, my third priority is very simple. I want there to be more than 12. This is only a start. And it was put on one of these slides, you know, Greenaways 2. Actually, I mean, my post bag on the Greater Cambridge Partnership is basically full of 24-hour abuse. And the one thing that actually raises my spirits is people actually want Greenaways in this area. And uh, I had an MP today begging for more money for more greenaways. So I see these as just greenaways 12. I rather like the idea we do them bit by bit by experiment and we will get more, but we, we cannot do it too fast because Simon, Susan and Charlie have got to get public acceptance. So my three priorities, we do it bottom up with public acceptance, we preserve the rural feel and eventually we have many, many, many more than 12. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Francis. It's a pleasure to agree with you. Um, okay, and finally, John, please. Right, thank you. You can see my top priority at the top. Keep what makes Cambridge special. What I haven't heard yet from anyone is any sense of the overall combination of these 12 digital greenways. How many people are going to be using them? What pressure is going to arise on key pinch points? What really do we know in terms of how many cyclists, where will they go, and what, how will conflicts be managed? City centre issues at the moment. You also have historic environment issues. Here you're coming with the greenways into the area of the historic core appraisal. I haven't seen yet any interface between the Greenway project and other key environmental policies. Cofen Sheep's Green has come up, rightly valued in the historic core appraisal of very high significance. There's an obvious pinch point up at the entrance by Mill Pit. How are you going to cope with the extra number of people? And it's a tranqu tranquil and sensitive area. How do you mix walkers people pushing prams with speeding cyclists. And as for Garrett Hostel Lane, that number three at the top, that's an extract from the Brigham report. I'm not sure many people would agree with him about the route working well. Tennis House Passage. Here, are serious proposals in the Brigham report for repaving of one of the most exceptional historic areas in the country. And basically, that Cumberton Greenway People are going to be coming over Garrett Hostel Bridge and either through Trinity Lane or Senator's Passage. Somebody has got to look at environmental capacity and quickly. 
rethink required is my view. Great. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I didn't believe you could do that many slides in that time, but that's fantastic. Thanks. Okay, the floor is open now. We're going to have half an hour of, you can ask questions. If you really want to ask a question to a specific person, say that and they'll pick up on it later. Otherwise, if you just want to make a general point, make a general point. We're just going to let the conversation flow, and then after half an hour, we'll turn to each of the panelists 